Mr. Jeremy Bell investigates aviation disasters. He sits through the wreckage. He tries to make sense of the broken pieces. He thinks he's putting the puzzle together. But what happens when you find an extra piece? You're gonna be fine, sir. Let's get you to lay down right here. Guys, I wasn't on the plane. I'm the, I'm the investigator in charge. How'd you get here so fast? Yeah, listen, it's Bell. No, I know, I know. I'm actually at the site. But you're not gonna believe this. I saw it go down. That's right. <laughs> I'll be here. You're with the NTSB and you saw the plane go down? Mm-hmm. What were the odds be on that? About the same odds that anyone survived this thing. Makes it easy. First plane crash, guys? Well, keep looking for the living, you never know. Anything is possible. Jeremy Bell from the National Transportation Safety Board. I'm the lead investigator in charge. Flight 1064 from Boston was scheduled to land in Seattle at uh, 5.45 a.m. Radar and radio contact, however, was lost at approximately 5.28 a.m. Uh, Mr. Bell, are there any survivors? The likelihood of anyone surviving is remote. However, the search and rescue efforts are continuing, and uh, we're just in the process of getting briefed, okay, by all the coordinating agencies. So when we know more, we... Is it true you saw the plane go down? Um, so, uh, when we know more, we will, we're going to let you know, okay? And that's going to be all for now, people. All right? Thank you. What can I do for you? My family was on the plane. Oh. I'm, uh... I'm so sorry. You 
You have a nice room. Oh, it's not bad. What's your name? Marilyn. Marilyn Lanier. Marilyn, I'm going to give you the number of our family affairs officer. Her name is Jill Covington. You haven't spoken to her yet? Can you take me there to the plane? Jill Covington is going to do that. Now, I want you to call her because she already knows who you are and she's expecting a call. There's no one left. Do you think they suffered? It's highly unlikely that but they... But the fear. They must have had fear. Matthew had this little bear. Could you get that for me? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to call Jill for you right now. I'm just so cold. <laughs> Wait, miss, ma'am, so no, 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 no. Hey, what am I doing? No. This is all wrong. <laughs> it's this okay. is very wrong. It's okay. It's all right. You've been through an ordeal. It's okay. Mm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix you a drink, okay? Um, okay. Oh, you see me? Hello? Jeremy! It's John! Where are you? Look, we found a big chunk of the fuselage and the tail cone. Okay. Uh, miss? The plane enters the trees in a right, low nose attitude consistent with the right roll. The right wing sheared off and cut a swath through the trees. The fuselage tube broke apart and skipped up the hill. Now, there's a fracture or crack in the fuselage crown. It's caused either by impact with a tree or the ground. Now, I got 50 bucks, said, with the ground. Duels, want to take that bet? 50 on the trees. You're on. You're both wrong. This plane came apart in the air before the crash. Well, I don't know how you can be so sure. I mean, without a spectrographic analysis, I mean... You'll see that I'm right. Melody base. Can I get a crane up here, please? I got the cabin section. I want to bring it back today. Today. Hey, John. Yeah. Great. How the hell they missed this? I'll take it to the coroner's tent. Oh, this is Hallie. Oh, the roommate. Yeah, right. Hi, this is, uh, we met once. This is Amanda's dad. Oh, hi. Hi. Is she there? Um, she's gone, Mr. Bell. You know that. Oh, that's right. It's spring break. Listen, uh, she didn't decide to, uh, Surprise me and get on the plane, did she? Mr. Bell, I don't know what to say. Was she coming to see me? Mr. Bell, I don't understand what you're trying Just to ask me. You tell me! Was she coming to see me? Please calm did down. she? I don't or did she not get on the plane? Bell, she's gone, okay? That's all I know. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you. No. No, no, no.
no one would wear that top with that skirt. Find another torso. And no stripes. You know, young people today, you'd think they'd have some sense of fashion. They're all slobs. I've got a daughter in college, she's got a little metal ball stuck in her tongue. That's supposed to be attractive. Shut up! Hey, Jer Jeremy. Jeremy. What's up? What's the matter? You have to keep this to yourself. I don't what? want the rest of the team to know. I don't want the press to know. Well, that's great. Eight crew members, 79 passengers on the list. Assuming no amputees, that's 174 arms, connected or disconnected. Now, you gentlemen, hand me arm number 175. Oh, Is he all right? I think my daughter was on this flight. She wouldn't be on the passenger list. She flies without a ticket on my pass. He thinks his daughter was on the flight. It's impossible. His daughter died two years ago. Bother you. I just wanted to thank you for being such a gentleman this morning. I brought you a cake. I'm just gonna put it right over here. Sometimes it's nice to have something in your room that's not from the hotel. Right. Yeah, I must have. I must have slept. I don't know four or five hours in, in this bed. Your pillow has your scent on it. It's a good scent. I spoke to Jill Covington. Oh, yeah, good. She said it's good to talk about it. Um, Dan was my husband. And um, Matthew was my youngest. And Samantha, she was the middle. She was son. She was 12. And um, Natalie was 15. And I had come out to take care of my mother. Um, can you believe this? She passed away Tuesday. Everyone was coming for the funeral. Your daughter? Yeah. She's lovely. Well, I'm not surprised. I must be crazy about her. This is Dr. Ramsdale. Uh, can you come down to the coroner's tent at the site right away? I'll be right there. Is everything okay? Thanks for coming. We fit all the pieces together. And we now have a positive ID on the body that's not on the passenger list. Take a look. Hello? Dad? Amanda? Is that you? Yes. Amanda? Oh, 
thing. God! Oh, honey, you have no idea. Listen, sweetie, can I call you back in a few minutes? I'll explain. Okay. 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 I love you. <laughs> I love you. Hey, pal, you know what? I've seen it all. Okay. I don't think you've seen this. It's you, all right. We ran the prince, there's no doubt about it. That's you. <laughs> that must have been quite a dream. I... Um, they came to take the food order, and I told them not to wake you. Oh, that... Sorry. That's all right. Uh, well, I wouldn't be on the passenger list. Probably wouldn't have one for me. I fly for free. Well, that's nice. <laughs> Do you work for the airlines? Uh, no, the National Transportation Safety Board. It's reassuring. I, uh, I don't particularly like to fly. <laughs> Fair enough. So where are you heading? I'm actually heading to see my daughter. Oh. Photo. Oh, wow, she's lovely. Oh, my God. Is she in college now? Yes. I have two girls, and they prefer I stay as far away as possible. They're at that age. <laughs> Believe me, I know. This one and I had a huge fight two years ago, and it's never been quite the same. A boy? No, she pierced her tongue. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, you're awake. We have a meal if you'd like. Actually, you know what? Can I have a scotch straight up? Scotch sounds good. Um, make that too. Thank you. To uh, smooth landings. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You know. That's not right. Um, your glass. Excuse me, miss. Um, my glass is, uh, crap. Oh, well, that's not good. Uh, excuse me. Is everything all right with the flight? Of course.
B's not here. I heard the investigator in charge isn't answering his page. Hey, what if that beeper we're hearing, what if that's his? Oh, man. What would the odds be on that? How little we know How much to discover What chemical forces flow How ignorant bliss is How little it matters How little we know Mr. Jeremy Bell just another name on a list compiled by fate. In a medical school laboratory, Diane Ballard is learning to dissect bodies. But she's about to learn something else. A lesson where the teacher is terror and the laboratory is the human soul. Damn it, where the hell is Diane? She is always late. Relax, Paul. Yeah. Thank you, Cheryl. She's we fall further and further behind, I will remember to relax. After all, it's what I love the most about the first year of medical school. It's also relaxing. Are you relaxed? Good. I guess it's just me. Oh, sweetie pie. Sorry, I got hung up. Diane, it's bad enough we have to do our lab work in the middle of the night. You could at least try to be on time. Don't let it happen again, OK? Sorry. We're starting with the head, right? Yeah. It's your turn to cut. Have either of you removed the head wrapping? It looks kind of loose. Not me. Me neither. Huh. Okay. Go ahead, Diane. Let's see what old Slim looks like. An evil voodoo priest. That tattoo was put on him after his death to keep him dead. Most voodoo priests try to help people, but a bokor is one that's gone bad. That tattoo is there to block his evil power. I grew up around here. I had a nanny who used to tell me all sorts of stories. She believed him. I mean, Starly, I just came in to get some notes. How's it going? Fine. Hi. I don't think we've officially met. I'm Richard Lenski. Diane Barnes. Nice to meet you. Yikes. He's lovely. So, uh, everything cool? Sure. Okay. You guys keep burning that midnight oil. It was nice to meet you, Diane. You too. What was that about? Is everything cool? All right. But you have to promise not to say anything. Okay. Lenski stole a key from a nurse up on the ward and took some morphine. Are you kidding? Huh. How do you know? Cheryl and I saw him opening the closet. There he was, stuffing morphine vials in his pockets. 
I'm sure it wasn't the first time. Wow. Well, what did he say? He begged us not to say anything. And you can't either. If you say something and we don't, it's gonna look like we are hiding something. Mm -hmm. I'm not a snitch. Yeah, let's let's postpone the ethics discussion at the work. Okay. Make the following skin incisions in the midline from vertex to chin. I'm not slicing into that tattoo. You do it. What do you think is going to happen, Diane? I just don't want to do it. We've already cut the heart out and stuck it in the bag. Right? Engaged. Congratulations. I'm jealous. <laughs> Till death do us part. Right, sweetie? Well, death won't part you. Not if your love is really true. What was that? I thought we were the only ones in the building. I don't know. Probably a cleaning crew. Diane? Diane? What? We're heading back. <laughs> so? Maybe the cleaning crew moved it. Why, why would they move it? The cadavers are left out all the time. The organs are gone, too. Where's Dan? organ banks. He wants us all. 
He's coming. Stay out. Oh. Are you all right? Oh, my shoulder. Freaky little number, huh? What? What is this, Richard? Some kind of joke? It has its humorous aspects. You want to get us out of here? Can't do it. Stop playing around, Richard. If this is about the drugs, we're not going to say anything. We promise. Richard, we'll never tell him. Okay? have our word. Never. We're not going to tell anybody. They told me. I tell you, Dragging that cadaver through the woods was no picnic. But you were brilliant, honey. How'd the puppet show look? Looked like he was really banging that drum, didn't it? How'd it look? Baby, how'd it look? Wear your shoes. You look fine. Come here. Quit it. I need your shoes. Need my shoes we have to clean up, Richard. Honey, we're going to take care of all of that. No one's even going to realize that those two are missing for a couple of days. Now there's dirt. I just cleaned all that. Why are you so uptight? Diane. Don't you think they're running a vacuum cleaner at 2.30 in the morning my strike the neighbors is a little odd? You're hurting my wrist. Sorry. My bracelet. Richard, my bracelet. What about it? It's gone. Oh, my God. I think it fell in. It fell in the pit. You weren't wearing your bracelet. Sure. Uh, it's not here. It's because you misplaced it. You weren't wearing your bracelet. Look, Diane, it's not time to panic right now. You came up with a brilliant plan, and it worked. Killing them was your idea. Killing them was both of our idea. I mean, you're the one that came up with this whole voodoo angle bocor thing, which was genius. We have to go back and dig up the pit. <laughs> Are you nuts? The bracelet has my name on it. They can trace that back to me. You weren't wearing the bracelet. I never should have put that tattoo on the man. That is a sacred symbol. Why not? What, because you're afraid you're going to make the gods mad? The voodoo gods? Huh? Come on. Don't tell me you're starting to believe all that stuff. Do you love me? <laughs> you know I do. Have you lied to me about anything? About what? Anything. Of course not. Because you can't lie to me, Richard. What are you doing? Because I'll know. Baby. You're the only person I've ever loved. And if you don't love me, I don't think I can take this. So we did this for us. Doctors. Partners. Children. Mm -hmm. Everything we talked about.
I told you the bracelet wouldn't be in there. I know because I pawned it last week. But I couldn't tell you. You would have thought I didn't love you. Can't you see you left me with no choice? I should have burned my bones to ashes and scattered them in a churchyard. But why would you know that? You're not a believer. You see, my nanny taught me better than you know. She also warned me not to love the uninitiated. She told me that a boat goer's lover must be as pure as the sky. 
Just as a Bogor's heart must be as black as the earth. We amend the proverb to read, Hell hath no fury like a dead woman scorned.